for years. We've been shining a spotlight on the challenges and the problems surrounding the Indian Point nuclear power plant located in Buchanan, New York. Well, according to today's New York Times, a powerful new voice here appears to be joining that chorus. I'm talking about the governor, of course, Andrew Cuomo. If you saw it right there on the cover of the paper, he reportedly wants to shut down the plant. IP finds itself in the governor's crosshairs because of, among other reasons, the plant's proximity to a fault line, a poor safety record, and of course, a population density and arguably an unfeasible evacuation plan. Undoubtedly, on the governor's mind are several recent events we all know of that have placed nuclear power under the microscope, not just in our region, but really across the globe. Of course, I'm referring to the catastrophe still unfolding at the Fukushima plant, Japanese nuclear plant that exploded following a tsunami there. You can go closer to home to the floods in Iowa that are threatening the safety of nuclear facilities along the Missouri River and to the wildfires that we see in New Mexico coming dangerously close to a major nuclear weapons lab. Now, out all of those startling headlines come on top of a recent report showing that plants are being allowed to stay operational much longer than were originally planned and combining to weigh heavily on decision makers in the surrounding areas. Now, you can also add a potentially additional very scary concern to the list, cancer. Indian Point, located in the nation's most populous areas I mentioned. No other power plant in the entire country has got more people living within a 50-mile radius of this plant. Now, that's a concern not only because it makes evacuation, I think, frankly impossible, but also because, according to several studies, living near the plant may, and I stress may, cause cancer. Let's bring in our Kim Lengel now, who's been covering the story for a while, and she joins us with an exclusive report. Rich, the highest rates of thyroid cancer reportedly exist in the four counties that surround Indian Point. That's Rockland, Putnam, Westchester, and Orange. We spoke with a scientist who published a study back in 2009. He found that thyroid cancer rates in those counties were off the charts, nearly 66% higher than the national average. Pockets like these are called cancer clusters. Now, as you might imagine, the nuclear industry has been critical of the study, calling it bad science. But as the aftermath of the disaster in Japan continues to unfold, the data about cancer clusters around Indian Point is getting a second look. People living with thyroid cancer in the area say it's about time. You can see this was one operation. Another one was down in here. And if you look here, there's no muscle. They had to take out all this mushroom tissue here. It, not the same on this side, there's muscle. 60-year-old Chris Peterson was diagnosed with thyroid cancer in 1989. They said if you were going to get a cancer, this is the best cancer for you to get because it's the easiest to cure. Nearly 12 years later, Chris is fighting his fifth bout of thyroid cancer. The terminal cancer has spread into his lungs, and doctors say because of all the scar tissue from previous surgeries, there are no more treatment options. I live with uh, pain in my neck 24-7. I, I uh, control that with pain management. I live with fatigue. I live with dry mouth because when I got my external radiation on my neck, it cooked all my saliva glands, and now I have no saliva. It also radiated my teeth. I had to have all my teeth replaced. So now I don't have my own teeth. This is just what I'm going through, and it's not going to get better. It's going to get worse. Chris and his family have spent their whole lives living within an eight-mile radius of the Indian Point nuclear power plant, first in Havistraw as a child and later in New City, where he lives now. He blames the plant not just for his cancer, but also for his wife's thyroid cancer and for his daughter's overactive thyroid. It doesn't make sense that three people in one family can get thyroid cancer. It's not a disease that if I touch you, you're going to get thyroid cancer. But three of my immediate family have either overactive thyroids or thyroids that have to be removed. I don't have the statistics of how many people in Rockland County have thyroid cancer, but I also have to think that it came from someplace, and the only place I can point a finger out is Indian Point. We are looking at 
um, the thyroid cancer rates of each local county. Mm -hmm. The ones with the highest rates, over 75%, or almost double the U.S. rate, mm -hmm. Rockland, Orange, and Putnam. Joseph Mangano is an epidemiologist and executive director of the Radiation and Public Health Project, a group of widely published scientists and physicians who study cancer patterns near nuclear plants to see if there's a connection. The group's findings, published in the International Journal of Health Sciences in 2009, target Indian Point as a possible cause for high rates of thyroid cancer. Back in the mid-70s, just as these two reactors opened, the thyroid cancer rate in the four closest counties, Putnam, Rockland, Westchester, and Orange, were no different than the state and national rates. Today, the local rates are 66% higher. In fact, they're among the highest in the country. The link between radiation and cancer is definite and widely accepted. Extensive research following the nuclear explosion at Chernobyl in 1986 and the atomic bomb drop at Hiroshima prove long ago that radiation causes cancer but very little is still known about what causes thyroid cancer. According to the National Cancer Institute, there are very few risk factors, things like family history and thyroid disease. The problem is, is that thyroid cancer is very indolent. It doesn't really show up very well. There are no symptoms to speak of. But one factor stands out, especially for Joseph Mangano, that's radioactive iodine, a chemical found in atomic bombs and a chemical that is released from nuclear plants like Indian Point. The three of the counties, Putnam, Orange and Rockland, were in the top eight of the counties with the highest rates. That's staggering. There is, and it's high for males and females, it's high for whites and blacks, it's high for young adults and middle-aged and elderly. Um, something has caused this rate to skyrocket. And there is really, well, of course, more research needs to be done, but at this point, there's no other explanation than the fair, fairly large amounts of iodine that was released from Indian Point over the years. Well, the, the doctors that have spoken from the public health organizations, county, state, federal, have looked at data like that and termed it junk science. And they can do that because you can't receive the type of impact from nuclear power plants because nuclear power plants just don't release a lot of radiation. Jerry Nappy, spokesman for Entergy, the company that owns and operates Indian Point, says the power plant releases very small amounts of radiation, less than one-tenth of one percent of what you'd encounter during your everyday life. All plants, all nuclear power plants are required to file each year with the federal government how much radiation they release, radiological effluent reports. All that information is public. And uh, the fact is, uh, it's a very, very small amount. The information is available to the public when it gets reported. From 1970 to 1993, the federal government produced a comparative listing of annual emissions for every reactor in the U.S. This report ranked Indian Point as the fifth highest producer of radioactive iodine emissions of the 72 nuclear plants around the country. It was the last report of its kind because the federal government discontinued the report after 1993. More recent data on emissions releases is available on the web through the industry's independent watchdog, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. However, much of the data for Indian Point, including radioactive iodine releases, is missing. The simple answer is even though the closer you are to a reactor, the higher your risk, um, there's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Um, there is no safe area. Thyroid cancer is rising all across this country. We need to be concerned that there is a link between radiation leaks from Indian Point and increased thyroid cancer in the population surrounding counties. I think this absolutely requires the government and the scientists to get involved, and it needs uh, patients to get involved because uh, the more voices are there are uh, clamoring for information, the more effective the response will be. Dr. Daniel Bronovan is one of the country's leading thyroid cancer specialists. He also heads a nonprofit group called Project Chernobyl, which focuses on the diagnosis and treatment of thyroid cancer among victims of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. So it's more than double. Dr. Bronovan has done his own research on thyroid cancer rates in the four counties surrounding Indian Point, 
and his findings are similar to Joseph Mangano's. Clearly, patients in these counties are getting cancer at a higher rate than nationally, and the real question is why. Dr. Bronovan says that his data is conservative and that he doesn't want to overstate the response. While he says there's no reason to scare people, he believes there's also no reason to ignore it either. Dr. Bronovan is a, an expert on this from his professional and personal experience. He's been active as a physician in the United States doing this for years. If he says something, we better pay attention. Former New York State Assemblyman Richard Brodsky has brought numerous lawsuits against the relicensing of Indian Point. He says if this cancer cluster information is correct, it's real evidence that nuclear plants are affecting public health. Here's where we are right now. In 1995, as an assemblyman, Brodsky drafted legislation that forced the New York State Department of Health to make its cancer data public, which it had always refused to do. The interactive cancer map, now on the web for anyone to access, allows you to check your own neighborhood against 17 different cancers. When I inserted this language, creating this into the budget, Governor Pataki vetoed it at the request of the chemical industry. We took us a long time, but we got it turned around. It took us two years to produce the map. They're going to be doing more analysis, but we're in the process of forcing the government's own information out so the public can look at it. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission has said that Joseph Mangano's cancer cluster study does not follow good scientific principles. It says there's no correlation between the operation of nuclear plants and the increased incidence of cancer. The commission says it bases that opinion on a study released by the National Cancer Institute in 1991. In a statement, a spokesman for the NRC wrote, Because that study was done about two decades ago, the NRC has decided it is time to undertake a new review of cancer rates around U.S. nuclear power plants. We have asked the National Academy of Sciences to perform that study, and it is in the early stages of doing so. Despite what his doctors say, Chris insists he's living with cancer, not dying from it. As the owner of his own construction company, Chris says he can't afford to stay at home and be sick. It makes me angry to have to be going through this, but it's the only thing I have. I can't, if I let that anger take over my life, then what do I got? And that, you know, I just deal with it every day. My wife deals with it every day. And we just pray that I'm going to be able to get through these treatments without the symptoms being so bad that I can't take it so I can keep working. So is it the fact that this is the fifth time that you've had thyroid cancer that, you know, you're willing to just continue on with your life or? Well, it doesn't come down to that. It comes down to you have to. If I don't, what do I do? You can't sit home and feel sorry for yourself. That ain't going to happen. And if they prove that India, it came from Indian Point, I may not be alive to see the, what they find, but at least it may help some other family right down the line. Now, in addition to our investigations, and we've done many, two of the state's highest offices, the governor and attorney general, are also investigating Indian Point in an effort to block its relicensing. Rich? All right, Kim. Well, I think people can walk away fairly and be um, unsure as to the root of this. It's fair enough to say somewhat definitively, there's something going on here. Uh, there is definitely a spike in the amount of, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, cancer cases we're seeing in this Fort County area, right? Right, the takeaway from this is twofold. One is that something is clearly going on with the rates of thyroid cancer in these four counties, whether you think the studies are bad science or not, the data from the Department of Health is clear. And people should be asking whether it's on the federal level or the state level. There needs to be an investigation. That surprised you. Didn't at the end of this that while you were trying to connect the dots here, there wasn't, whether it be, as you said, on the federal or on the state level in New York, more than getting the data, somebody actually doing some investigation about this? What surprised me was when we went for answers, when we said, what, what are your, uh, what are your uh, releases? And they said, oh, it's, it's not enough to cause any damage. Well, when we went to find the data, it was missing. Years were missing. Uh, quarters were missing. How is it that the NRC is not responsible for this data? Right. And then how can they give us an answer and say it's safe? And there's seemingly by the day, if not certainly by the week here, more and more questions directed at the NRC, not just in our region, but at the national level.